Oh, whoa. Shalom. All right. This will be the part. Um, this will be the part two. What is the role, right, of the Gentiles or the Anglo-Europeans or, quote, white people, in other words, in Rastafari? You know what I'm saying? What is the role? Now, one will point to the area of the scripture. They'll say, well, there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. And on the spiritual level, being creatures of God, calling into that spiritual sonship and daughtership, there is no difference, you understand, if they receive it. We see this throughout the scripture. Although Christ says in many interesting instances, I have not been sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel with that serial Phoenician woman, you understand, who came for a healing, Christ turned away from her. Christ first said to her, you know, I have not been sent, but the Lord, she was the house of Israel. You understand, she went on to beseech because she had a demonic daughter or a meth addict or whatever like that of that time and everything. And then she said, right, and then she said, um, she came to him again. And he says that it's not right, it's not meat, it's not proper, it's not in, in God's proper order to give the what? The children's bread. Which children? Look at Amos 9 and 7. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? He said it's not right to give the children's bread to dogs. Now this Syrian Phoenician, in one gospel says Syrian Phoenician, in another gospel says Greek. So that means at that time the Syrian Phoenician people were the Greek people. All right? Uh, according to the scripture, right? And so she comes and says, Truth, Lord. He, he just called this woman a dog. Calling a woman a dog is to call a woman a bitch. But he called this Gentile woman, this white woman, a bitch. And she said, Truth, Lord. But check out her faith. She said, The dogs eat, you understand, the crumbs which fall off the master's table. Now Christ turns to this woman. He, he, you know, finally, he had first turned away from her. Then he turned to her. Now, you would say, well, Jesus would never do that. He loves everybody equally. But his name meant that he saves his people. See, what the Gentiles don't recognize is that it's because of the disobedience of the children of Israel that he fulfilled that other area of prophecy where he would turn to the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? The same way Edomari Haile Selassie also turned to the Gentiles. Now, you have to understand this very carefully. You know what I'm saying? You have to understand that it was not by, it, it was not by his initial will, you understand, but because of the unwillingness of the people to whom it was revealed. This is why he says that he would provoke us to jealousy with a people who are no people. You understand? This is why he says that the natural branches were broken off, right, so that, so that the, the wild olives, the Gentiles, the wild olives were grafted in. That's for a time and a dispensation. Now we're seeing in this 2012, this time and dispensation coming to its cyclic cycle of completion. You understand this? Where he would then take the broken branches and to graft them in, right? To graft them in once again to their own root. Let me give you a scripture on this so you can understand this. You over and this is New Testament right here, because people will say, oh, well, that right there is the Old Testament, and we're not in the Old Testament no more. You know, you get those kind of folks and everything like that. So we're going to point to the New Testament here. You understand? So what can they say to the New Testament? Now, this is chapter 11, chapter 11 of Romans. Turn your Bibles, brothers and sisters and others who are interested in this, to Romans chapter 11. Now, here in the Schofield Reference Bible, there's a subscription that says, But spiritual Israel, the spiritual Israel, is finding salvation. Right? It's finding salvation. So let's read through this for a moment, because we have to understand, that's where we began the first part, with, well, who is a Jew? Right? And who is a Gentile? So, a Gentile are the non-Afro-Shemitic people. Now, who will be the Afro-Shemitic people of the Bible? Well, according to a basic interpretation, Abraham was the first to be called Hebrew according to the Bible, even though they were Hebrew priests according to ancient Egypt. But that's another matter. That's the back story right there. But according to the scripture, Abraham is called the Hebrew, right? Well, Abraham, he had... Um, 
he had Ishmael was his um, firstborn according to the quote flesh, but the true seed is in Yitzhak, is in Isaac. You understand? And Isaac shall the seed be called. So we are in Isaac. You understand? Now he also after Sarah had died. You understand? The Bible says that he he had a third wife, whose name was Keturah, whose scripture would say is a Medianite or an Ethiopian. Very interesting. Moses also had an Ethiopian wife too. So this uh, Ethiopian Hebrew connection is, is very deep, and even in the first book of the Bible. It seems to be the almighty will all along. But now from Keturah, he had six sons. And we did an a audio CD. You can check out the audio CD. Go to www.lojsociety.org on this teaching. But this is the basic, the scripture will show you, and this is the basic overview. He had six sons with this Keturah, his third wife. So the, so the first wife that bore, who was the second wife, was Hagar. You understand? Know Bore Ishmael, and from the Ishmaelites, we get the Arab and the Mohammedan and the Islamic, and now we get this good, this chirak of, uh, of, of, of Islamofascism, this kind of mixture, right? But from Ishmael come the Arab people, and the original Arab people were an Ethiopian people, if you go and research it for yourself. In fact, if you want to get a snapshot of who the biblical, you understand, Arab people that Ishmaelites look like, look at the Sudanese people, look at the Somalian people, if you want to get a physical snapshot of what they look like in the biblical times, right? And there's a wealth of information out there from even European scholars that, that way early in the 1800s and even before that, well, you know, found it out because the geographic um, makeup of the area has changed a lot. You understand? Know in these last 200 or so years. It's been changing a lot ever since B.C. times, but it's been changing even more so in these modern times, right? So we have Ishmael, then we have Yitzhak, right? Yitzhak, who is the seed, right? And from Yitzhak, you understand? Know then we will come to Yaakov, the heel grabber, and then from Yaakov, whose name was changed to Israel, would we have 12 sons and one daughter, all right? And then we have from Abraham's or Abraham, Abraham's third wife, Keturah, the Medianite or Ethiopian, right? We have six children. One of the children is known as Seba or Saba, which we have Sheba, the queen of Saba or the queen of Sheba. So that means that Sheba herself, technically speaking, according to the Bible, coming from the loins of Abraham, descended, she is a Hebrew as well. This is why when Abraham, uh, or, or rather when, when Moses, you understand, when Moses married um, Jethro's daughter, Jethro the Medianite, that's why the Bible says that he married the Ethiopian woman. You understand? He married the Ethiopian woman. So we see this link throughout the scripture in the very root of the Bible. Because I'm think that we're talking just because of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, but scriptures show an earlier rootage of this Afro-Shemitic identity. The Kuvr and the Guest is, is wonderful because it basically explains why we say as, as holy Ethiopians and righteous Ethiopians, we are Shemites. That does not exclude the Kamo blood, the Kemitic blood. We have Joseph. Look at Joseph. He married the Egyptian woman. You understand? So what would their children be? Their children would be Kamo Shemitic. You understand? That's what we mean when we say Afro Shemitic. Overstand? Overstand. Good. So that is a foundation right there. But let's get to this scripture right here. Right? This scripture right here, Romans chapter 11. I say then, right? I say then, have God, have Ha Elohim, the true and living God, Baruch, who blessed be he, have he cast away his people? Did John cast because the, 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 the Jews, the Judahites, right, said so we have no king but Caesar, then they got Caesar Bogeas, but because they turned their backs to crucify the black Messiah, Yeshua HaMoshiach, did God cast off his people? Now, you have to understand this paradigm, otherwise this word doesn't make much sense. You understand? It will not make much sense in its 
trueness. You know what I mean? When you see the true historical and the archaeological and the art and facts, right? So the question is asked by Hawari Apollos, has God cast away his people? God forbid. Ayadaris. God forbid. For I also am an Israelite. Hawari Apollos saying, yo, I'm going to tell you straight up. Yeah, I'm the minister to the Gentiles, is what Paul is saying, but I'm an Israelite. You know what I'm saying? He didn't deny the fact that he's an Israelite. And he had to make this clear in the book of Romans. Why? Because what's the book is named? Romans. You over there? The book of the Ethiopians? The book of Romans. So let's recognize where he's at. And he's speaking to a mixed multitude. He's speaking to Judahites, Israelites, and Gentiles. He's speaking to racially black Afro-Shemitic people and non-Afro-Shemitic Anglo-European people or Romans. Overstand? Overstand. Now, he says that, for I also am an Israelite. So these, his people mean they're Israelites too. Of the seed of Abraham. I'm of the race, the racial seed of Abraham. Right? The seed of Abraham or the sperm of Abraham. Right? Of the tribe of Binyam or Benjamin. He was a Benjamite. Big up Jamaica. Right? Verse 2 it says, God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. He said that John did not cast away his people which he knew from before. You understand? He says, what? What? W-O-T. You can really see this Benjamite. You know, you can see this. He's speaking Patois here, right? Or at least that's how King James translated W-O-T. What? What ye not? What ye not? What? The scripture saith of Elias. Now, we just touched on Elias. I didn't even think that this, this is the Holy Spirit. We just touched on Elias earlier in, in the other portion about the two advents in one view. And now right here it says, Don't you know what the scripture saith of Elias, of, of uh, Eliyahu? Eliyahu, Elias, Eliyahu, or Elijah, how he maketh intercession. He maketh malada, bemalada, right? Um, he maketh intercession to Ha Elohim Baruch Hu against Israel, against these lost, these lost hoodwinked and bamboozled black people who don't want to recognize the truth. He maketh intercession against, not in favor of, but against Israel saying what? What does he say? What does, what does Elijah, what does the book of Eli, what does Elias, Elias say? Verse 3, Lord, Adoni, Abetu, Gita, they have killed thy prophets. What? God's people, black people killing their own prophets? Get out of here. That, for real? For real? For real? What? They have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, they've altered the, the way of life, the spirituality. And I am left alone. He's left alone. He's like a Bahitawi, like Abu Kadus. He's left alone, and they seek my life. They seek my life. Wow. Mm. You know, because we want to know, well, what did black people do that's so bad? You understand that we have to be living the way we're living today. Why we have to be seeing what this goes going on, right? Verse 4, but what saith the answer of God to him? In other words, this is what Eliyahu, what Eliyahu said, Elias said. But what did Ha Elohim, what did Hashem say to him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal who have not bowed their knee, who have not bowed down, like when Rasta said, no bow down, no bow down. They haven't bowed the knee to who? The image of Baal. You see the image of Baal? This is one of the Baals, one of the lords here. Because Baal means lord or owner. You understand? In this ownership society. Because they, they, they took possession and owned, said that they own these niggas. They say they own these niggas right now because you got, you got, um, they're, they're, they're European names. That's why when you go to court, you got to hire somebody to represent you because they say you can't represent their name. You, you need to get a public um, advocate or something like that. How, how dare you come up in here? You know what I'm saying? You're not sovereign. You know what I'm saying? Don't you know who you are? But they won't tell you either. 
because they're not supposed to. Verse 5, even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant. So though we may see certain things even going wrong in Rastafari, recognize there is a kereta, there's a remnant. You understand? According to the election, the election of grace, not according to the Democratic Republican election, fire. You understand? According to the election of grace. Wow. So, you know, you, it makes you want to ask, like, well, what is this grace all about, man? For real. How, how can I get in on that remnant, that election of grace? Verse 6. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So either we have received this by grace or we received it by works. So and someone said, look at me, me, me I rise to my locks grow along uh, because I do this. Or I do. It's not of those works. It's of grace. You know what I'm saying? We have received this of the King of Kings and his Christ, not because we were the best of all people, not because we were doing the right thing at the time that Liz Teferi was born or that Kedamawi Haile Selassie sat upon the throne of David. No, it's because of grace, the grace of God. You know, it was in the grace of God, and it was in the timing of God, too. Now, here it talks about the national Israel. National Israel is judicially blinded. Now, once again, when we're speaking about Israel, and let us put this up here. We didn't, we didn't put this right here. Let us put Israel right here, right? Israel, right? Israel, right? Black Israel, or the Black Beta Israel. Can we put this in here? Um, Beta, the house of Israel. You understand that we're speaking about the real twelve tribes of Israel, not the organization so much, but the real context according to his majesty's, his majesty's teaching and the testimony of Yeshua and his glory, the B-I-B-L-E, the Metzhaf Kedus. So it's about the national, the nation of Israel, not the state of Israel. Don't get it twisted. We're speaking about the, see, the state of Israel come with these religious Jews and also the crypto Jews, the Rothschild Jews. So, so you have to overstand the difference. We're talking about racial Israel or the black base of Israel, the Lord sheep of the house of Israel. All right? And we're, we're sp speaking about in the context of um, maybe 60 or so A.D. You understand? 60 or so A.D. or maybe even 50 A.D. within a 10, 20, or 30 year period of time after Yeshua HaMoshiach our black Lord and Savior was crucified, you understand, died, and was resurrected by the power of Hashem, you understand, taught for 40 more years the Torah, the, the prophets, and the Psalms, and then ascended, you understand, to the right hand of the Father, you understand, the same Father who in 1892, you understand, manifested in the Son of Man, in Lich Teferi, you understand, his imperial majesty, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, all right, that's, a, that's part of the mystery of God in Christ. It says that the mystery of God in Christ in the latter days would be fulfilled. This is why in these latter days, this word is going forward. And ones who study and pray on it begin to recognize it and even bring forth a lot much more proof that we didn't even cite before, but it's a verification. The truth has its witnesses. The truth has many witnesses. Will you be a witness of the truth? Verse 7, it says, What then? What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for? I and I have not obtained what we seek for? But the election, it says, those who were elect, the election of grace, have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. That's what we're seeing in Rastafari right now. The rest are blinded. Those who receive the grace of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand? Yeshua HaMoshiach, they attain it. But those who make up other Christ and, 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 and get up in the crisis because of disobedience, they are blinded. They can't recognize what we're saying right here. You understand? So, that being what it is, based on their own choices, not on Jah's unrighteousness and not on I and I's unrighteousness, but on their disobedience. 
You understand? They want to talk about what Rastafari means for them. And so what Rastafari means in spirit and in truth. You understand? Verse 8 says, According as it is written, God, Hashem, hath given them the spirit of slumber. Them slumber, like them sleepy. Eyes that they should not see. They have eyes to see. And you say, okay, brother, let me show you this. And you're showing them all of it, and they don't get it. You understand? They, they don't get it. You know? Eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear to this day. To this very day. And David, Dawit, DVD, Davuti, Tahuti, saith, let their table, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense to them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always on the Babylonian preoccupation and occupation. Verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled? In other words, have they become offended like John the Baptist became offended? And lost his head, right? Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, Ayadaris. But rather, through their fall, salvation, Madan, the teaching of Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand? In its original context, did what? It came to them. All right? It came to them. Hold on for one moment right here, brothers and sisters. Let me see what this is. Um, all right, it came to them. You know, was, and this is why we find, um, at least historically, a lot of these black images, the black image of the Virgin Mary, so forth and so on, preserved in places far off like Russia. You understand? Know, like, like the grottos over in Poland. You understand? Know in, in the Vatican secret archives, in the catacombs under Rome, in, 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 in Glastonbury, in Glastonbury up in England. You understand? Know Even in some of the evidence behind the Da Vinci um, code and everything in France. You understand know what I'm saying? It came to salvation. You understand? Know came to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The, the, the non Afro Shemites, the Anglo Europeans. Are you overstanding the connection right here? You know what I'm saying? And now with knowing who's who, it begins to make more sense. You begin to even recognize the real truth of so-called history and our story. All right? So it says right here that because of this, because of their fall, the fall of black Israel, 70 A.D., right? The racial Judahites, right? That what happened? Salvation has come to the Gentiles the Anglo-European, or the Romans, because we're in the book of Romans, right? For to provoke them. What's the reason for this? For to provoke them. You know, somebody said, you better stop provoking me. Don't provoke me. But John says he has done this to do what? To provoke them, to provoke I and I and I to jealousy, to zealousy. You understand? Now, if the fall of them, black faith of Israel, the Judahites, I and I people, you understand know us, our ancestors, now the fall of them be to the riches of the world. Look at that. Our fall enriching the Europeans, the Anglo Europeans. Is that not true historically or not? I mean I mean you go look at it. You know they say that the Western world built up over slavery and this is why they cannot function the New World Order. Because they need to enslave somebody so they're going off with the other planets trying to find somebody to enslave. But those other beings they're going to find, they're not going to be able to enslave them, but they're part of the angelic force that's going to bring judgment in its own time. But I and I digress. You understand? Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them, the diminishing of black beta Israel, and the increase of the European and other Jews and white Christians, and historically speaking, right, the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, the riches of the Anglo-Europeans, right? How much more the fullness? In other words, it's saying, well, how much more is it going to be when 
the Almighty now flipped the divine script. Now we know that Ketamawi Haile Selassie came and he shot in those days. That's why it was called the Adi Zemin. You know what I'm saying? The Adi Zemin. When you look at the whole fact, it says an hour of tribulation, right? In the Bible, in, 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 in the, in the, um, um, Ye Johannes Arai, the vision of Yah's grace, the vision of, of Johannes, the vision of John, St. John's uh, revelation. We find that in there it speaks about an hour of tribulation. So I was thinking, same way, if a day with the Lord is a thousand years, right? That's what the scriptures say, that a day with the Lord is a thousand years. Uh, you like math? Let's do some math. If a day with the Lord is a thousand years, how many hours are in a day? People say 24. Uh-uh. According to the word, 12 hours in a day. So if you do a little bit of math and say, well, if there's 12 hours in a day, you understand? What is one twelfth of a thousand years? This, this number is interesting. One twelfth of a thousand years is, and now get this, is about 83 years. It's about 83 and a portion years. Now, the amount of time from the acceptable year of the Lord, 1930, and the coronation of Kedemawi Haile Selassie upon the throne of David, and 2012 right now, is about 83 years. Wow. Could that be, could there be some connection there? You understand? Well, let us see. You understand? And let us be prepared. Now, the Gentiles are warned. The Gentiles are warned. Now, we have to give this warning right here when we ask so what is the role of the Gentiles of Anglo-European or white people right in Ras Tesari or some would say the Selassie I movement move man and send move man man on the move not stagnated but man on the move progression right growth maturity let's read the Gentiles are warned Verse 13, for I speak to you Gentiles. Paul is saying, Paul is saying, I'm not speaking to black beta Israel. He did that in Acts of the Apostles, and we see how that worked out, right? But now he says, I'm an apostle for the Gentiles, for the Romans, for the Anglo-Europeans. And I think I need to put this up here so folks can, can see this, right? Even in the overflow section, right? Romans, right? Romans, right? We're in the book of Romans. Right? The book of Rome. Remember, the Romans would destroy um, Jerusalem in 70 A.D. and would take into captivity, you understand, the Judahites. Some would flee into Africa. You understand? Some would flee into Ethiopia. Others would later on flee into, um, you know, further Lemba people. Even the Yoruba people of Nigeria, as well as the Ebo, but the Yoruba say that their origination was Jerusalem. And then in 70 A.D., you understand, they had to migrate. So they went into Africa because being black people, they could be among other racially black people, you understand, and in a sense hide out because they saw a great desolation, abomination of desolation. When the Romans sacked Jerusalem, when? Let's go right here. In 70 A.D., now notice that the book of Romans right here is before this would occur. The book of Romans right here is written before that 70 A.D. time. Some say Christ was crucified 33 A.D. And then they say right here for the book of Romans, because you know time is very important, it says that this book was, was roughly written in 60 A.D. So within 10 more years, right, remember this is before Judah was still standing. There was still a black Israel polity in that Palestinian, that Philistine, that Philistia so-called land. Let's understand that. So look at this time. We got we got to understand the time right here. So this was the Romans would come in 70 A.D. and destroy the temple in Jerusalem. This is where we get the Tisha B'av, the Tisha B'av, or the ninth of the month of. Av, the Tisha Ba'av, or we say Bamarinya, the, the, the Tessa'a, the Tessa'a, the Tisha Ba'av, right? So now the Gentiles are warned right here. He says, For I speak to you Gentiles, right? And we have to speak to the Gentiles in Rastafari, inasmuch as I am the Apostle. Hawari Apollos is saying, I'm the one who is sent. 
of the Gentiles. He says, I magnify my office. He said, I magnify. He's not going to humiliate and humble and humiliate himself at being a Beit Israel among the Gentiles. You understand? No way, but he's going to communicate the truth live and straight and direct to them. You understand? As we must do. It might sound, like I said, the truth may sound like an offense, but it is not a khatiyat. It is not a sin. But it would be a sin if we say, well, I don't want to offend nobody, and we don't speak the truth. Overs? Overs. All right. He says he magnify his office. Verse 14 says, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are of my flesh. Oh, 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 saying. He says, each, he said, he said, only Malcolm X by any means necessary. Verse 14 of chapter 11 of Romans. He says, if by any means, if by any means I may do what? Provoke. Provoke to emulation. To emulation, to copy this, to do to do this, to receive Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, right? To emulation, he says, them which are my flesh. His flesh. So he's saying there's a... He's even showing within Romans there's a difference between him as an Israelite, you know what I'm saying, with that Ethiopian flesh, you know what I'm saying, or that Ethiopian complexion, and the Gentile Europeans, the Anglo-Europeans, and any real historian, and you study the artifacts, you see there is a big difference, you know what I'm saying, and some art in fact has been preserved from that time and basically prove that. So Paul is saying right here, which are my flesh. You see what I'm saying? Which are my flesh. So there's a racial element in what he is saying. He's not just talking about his personal family. You know what I'm saying? But he's talking about Kol Yisrael, all of Israel, and might save some of them. You, you know what he's saying? That he's trying to provoke them to get this message. And, and so hopefully even just some of them will be saved. Some of them will receive the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. Verse 15, for if the casting away of them, right, black face to Israel, the Jew or the Judahite, racially speaking, be the reconciling of the world. The reconciling of what world? The seclorum, right? What shall the receiving of them what shall the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah, when I and I people truly receive this word and spirit and truth of them be, but life from the dead, but life from this dead, this valley of, of the skull and bones, the dry bones, you understand, this, this, this kind of living death that the lost sheep of the Beta Israel are in presently. You understand? This is the election we need to be focusing on right now. Verse 16, it says, For if the first fruit be holy, be kedus, the lump is also kedus. And if the root be kedus, so are the branches. So if the root is holy, right, then the branches are holy, right? Which you can also say, well, if it's not, the root is not holy, well, the branches, at least he can judge a tree by it fruit. All right? So he goes on to say, and if some of the branches be broken off, if some of the black beta Israel be broken off. Remember, this was, he wrote this roughly 60 A.D. And the Romans would not sack Jerusalem until 70 A.D. under Vespasian and Tito, or you call them Titus, right? Titus, right? And Vespasian in 70 A.D. You understand? And they said the blood was so thick. You understand? There was so much blood there that it actually came up like, 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 some of kneecap. You understand? Blood and, and, and gore. And this, that, was, that was the destruction of what we would call black supremacy in, 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 in its last form. You understand? That black supremacy was destroyed then. Because the Romans said, uh, uh, well, people like Paul, many Gentiles are talking about this this crucified, um, this man that we crucified and everything under Pontius Pilate and still worshiping um, 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 the Roman gods or the Roman emperors as gods and everything, um, we're going to have to stop this stuff. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have to go after this. And this is why they went after that. So, so it, it, there's even an underlying essence when we study it. We can see the fuller fold of our story and therefore understand 
quote, his story, right? So he says right here that if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, remember he's speaking to the Gentiles, and thou, speaking to the Anglo-Europeans, the Romans, and thou, and the I, if you please, being a wild olive tree. So he said that the Gentiles, the white folks, were wild in comparison to the Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? They were wild. You understand? And we can look at Roman customs of the time, and we can look at Hebraic customs of the time. In fact, the um, book of Maccabee, which one of the brothers, Tobia, had put up a clip up there, and that kind of inspired I to look at the Maccabees again. I said, there's a real story there that we need to touch on. Y'all willing, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll reason on, on that aspect as well. But even Maccabee shows that difference between the Hellenism of its day, or the whitewashing of its day, and how many of the Beta Israel, and this was like before A.D., were going after it. You know, you know what I mean? Almost like what's going on today in this very time. You know, we see, we see niggas and people acting, you know, with the blonde wigs and all this kind of crazy stuff. I ain't no African. I ain't no, I, I don't care. You know, he's like, what's wrong with this? You know, is this a demonic possession or something? The, demonic, the demons have something to do with it too, but right here is speaking to the Gentiles, right? It's saying that if they are a wild, if y'all are wild olive trees, you are like a wild olive tree. If you were to graft in among them, just like we see the, the white rasta, right, grafted in among black beta Israel. The over right here, among black beta Israel. They, they're grafting amongst them. And with them, and with them, partakest of the root, partakest of Ainai, of Ainai roots and culture. You know what I'm saying? You partake of Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? You partake of I and I. Look at this book right here. Very interesting book. I, I showed it before. The Roots of Rastafari. They are partaking of the Roots of Rastafari. And this is a very good um, book right here, written by, I don't know if a Jewish, a Gentile woman, right here, Virginia Lee Jacobs. But she wrote a very good book right here. We ain't hating on nothing you know, besides evil, but this is a good book because it speaks the truth, because it's speaking about the roots of Rastafari. So they partake of the, what? The roots of Rastafari. Right? And fatness and the, and the richness of the olive tree. Now remember the olive tree because the, the anointing oil, the Christina, the anointing comes from the olive or according to the natural. Spiritually it's a spirit. But according to the natural it comes from that olive tree. Right? The, the natural type of it is the olive tree. What does it say in verse 18? It says, boast not against the branches. It's telling the Gentiles now, the Romans, the Anglo-Europeans, or the Europeans in that time, you know what I'm saying, but more correctly, the Romans in that time, the Roman white folks, because now you are no longer worshiping the Caesars. You no longer are worshiping idols. You know what I'm saying? Now you have salvation. Now you have peace and everything. Don't you boast against black faith to Israel. You understand? Don't you boast against the Ethiopian Hebrews. Don't you boast against Ainai. Don't you try to flip up his majesty's speeches and try to say, oh, we are holding one race superior, another inferior, when you know the context was talking about your own people, that you're not ministering the word of Rastafari to because they think you're crazy talking about a black messiah and everything, and you weak out, and then you run to Africa among black folks that's going to take you because of Willie Lynchism. They're going to take you as, oh, you must be a, uh, okay, they'll accept it from you, but you are not doing what is according to this word. You understand? You're like, 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 like Job. No, 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 Job, uh, like um, Jonah. You're running away, you understand, from where your mission is. Because you're saying, oh, white people are not going to accept it, but I'm going to hang out with the black people. You understand? Because you partake of I and I roots and I and I culture. But what the word says, boast not against the branches. Boast not white, Rasta, Rastafari. Don't boast against the branches. Right? But if thou boast, like if you do boast, you know, we say don't, you know, you say don't do something, people are going to do it anyway. And, and Paul recognizes it. But if thou boast, thou bearest, thou don't uphold it, thou bearest not the root. You're not bearing up the root, but the root thee. But the root, the roots are holding you up. You know what I'm saying? So don't boast 
you know what I'm saying, against black base of Israel, against Rastafari, against Ethiopian Hebrews, or against the fact that, well, the Ethiopian World Federation really has no place in its membership for white people. Why, why are you trying to pop the speeches of His Majesty as though, oh, we are oppressing you with bigotry and prejudice? You're not being real, you're lying. You understand? You're, you're lying. That's a lying spirit right there. And that's what the Word says, what it says. Thou will say then, this is what some of them are going to say, the branches are broken off. They say, but black people ain't getting this. You understand? So look, I'm white and I'm getting it, right? The branches are broken off. That I might be grafted in. Because those white, those black people don't want to get it, don't want to recognize it. I'm recognizing Selassie. I'm recognizing red, gold, and green. You understand? So don't you? They were broken off. So how they be grafted in? Oh, so you recognize they were broken off. Good, right? But what Paul says, well, hmm, well, because of unbelief, you understand, because of a lack of our name, because of unbelief, those lost black sheep, they were broken off. You understand? Because of unbelief, the careless Ethiopians were broken off. Job broke them off. You understand? Know he broke them off. Right? Because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest. Now, if you're standing in Rastafari court, you're standing by what? By faith. Right? Be not high-minded, but fear. Yo, don't be high-minded like, yeah, because I look like Caesar, but I look like white Jesus Christ. Or what? Come on, get off of that, man. For real, for your soul's sake. This Rastafari is no joke. This is no game. You understand? When the earth spins out of out of course, then a lot of people are going to recognize. But it might be too late because they won't have no foundation, no foundation. They're not no root, no root in themselves. You understand? They don't bear the root. The root bear you. You understand? So be not high-minded. Don't be high-minded because you're smoking the best buds. Because you know in the European areas, white areas, y'all can smoke the weed and stuff, not a problem, but if you have a little nickel bag and everything, you're going to go to Rikers Island in the ghetto, don't, don't, don't be high-minded, you understand, but fear, you understand, but fear, that's right, but fear, see, some of them will run and get the other verse where it says, um, but he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, because they don't know who they be, you understand, they don't know who they be. You understand? So some of them chat, 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 want to talk back. You got to ex-calm them, yo. Ex-calm them. We're under no obligation. We're under no good day talk. We're no, we're no, no contractual agreement. You understand? You do your Rastafari for you. You understand? And we will be a Rastafari for his majesty. You over? Now, it says that in verse 21, for if God, if Jah, spared not the natural branches, this is a warning to the Gentiles, if Jah didn't spear I and I ancestors who were the natural branches, black, beta, Israel, if he didn't spear them, right, check this out. Take heed. You better shimmer. You better hear this. Hear this intelligently. Don't hear it with your feeling and emotion. Hear it with your logic, with your linear thinking, with your intellect. You understand? Take heed, least he also spear thee not. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to spare you either. You know what I'm saying? Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of Ha Elohim Baruchu. His goodness and his severity. What do we mean by that? How does this relate to the black and the white? You understand? Well, listen. Verse 22, Romans chapter 11. On them which fell, on, on the lost sheep which would fall in 70 A.D., when the Romans under Titus and Vespasian sacked I and I holy temple in Jerusalem, killed I and I people, men, women, and children, if they were not spared, don't think because you think you look like Caesar Borgias or more like the image of Jesus, the false image of Jesus, you're gonna be spared too because you are high minded. Don't 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 this is a warning, you know what I mean? Hey, a word to the wise should be sufficient, but the fool will be the fool, because the fool says in his heart, there's no God. He don't store up this word in his heart. He don't pray and say, Abba, show me what this means. You understand? In Yeshua's name, show me what this means. Right? But behold, look, 
sight, re'eh, in that hole. Therefore, the goodness and severity of Ha Elohim on them which fell, severity. And look at Ethiopia, man. Yo, look, look at the, the creeping coup against his magic. Look at the red terror. Severity. Severity. You know what I'm saying? Severity. I mean, look, even today, if those people don't repent, you know what I'm saying? The careless Ethiopia don't repent. It's still severity. It's like Damocles' sword is hanging over their heads. And they don't want to recognize it. Severity. But toward thee, see, now, toward the Gentiles at this time, after the natural branch of those black Beta Israel, the racial Judahite Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrew Israel, after they fell, after severity hit them, but towards thee, the Gentiles, the Anglo-Europeans, the, the Romans, towards you, what was it? It was goodness. It was goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, it'll be good for you. So it's not saying, oh, well, a white man can't be Rastafari River. We're not saying that. You're not paying attention. You understand? And the fool says in his heart, there's no God. He's not paying attention. Attention, paying it. That's what, you know what you have to pay for the truth? Attention. All right? If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. This is, this is, this is John's word right here. Matt says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. You get that? Are you getting it? For my part, I glory in the Bible. We're his sons and daughters, so we glory in his majesty, and therefore we also glory in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So it's going on to say right here, it says right here, and they also, if they abide, not still in unbelief. If our lost black sheep, if our careless Ethiopians stop going on with the Allah, Allah, my men in that, or whatever they want to call it, you know what I'm saying? If they don't go on in that, that that denial of the King of Kings and His Christ, of the true gospel of His Imperial Majesty, what will it be for them? You understand? They shall be grafted in. They shall be restored. You understand? For God is able to graft them in again. For all things are possible with God in Christ. With God in and through Yeshua HaMoshia. They can't, even the key of the CTO can be grafted in again. It's not about what sort of president, you understand, or prime minister, you understand? It's not about what the political situation, it's not about what the global economy is about, you understand? That's an illusion. That's an illusion right there. Yeah, it has a real consequence because you believe in it. And therefore, you're giving that living essence of God over to that, like in the matrix, you understand? It's operating off of your belief in it. You understand? That's how it operates. Verse 24. For if thou wert cut off, cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature. So he's speaking still to the Gentile. He says, you're cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, right? And wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree. So y'all who are Gentile, white, Rastafari, you've been cut out of a wild olive tree. And contrary to what is in the natural, because it's contrary to nature, you've been grafted into a better tree, the good olive tree, the black beta Israel tree, the Ethiopian Hebrew tree, and the tree of Rastafari. You understand what does it say right here? It says, um, how much more shall these be? If John was able to make you as a white boy or girl see the light of Rastafari, if you really do see it in spirit and in truth, then how much more even the lost sheep, you saying, I and I lost people, you understand? How much more these, which be natural branches, they are natural, they are naturally, racially, naturally Israel because they be Ethiopian, because they be Hebrew, or as y'all say today, because they be black, you understand? Because they be black, be grafted into their own. You hear that? Grafted into their own olive tree. So Rastafari is our own olive tree. Recognize that. And so if you're a Rastafari and you're from some European or non afro shemitic stock of people and you are Rastafari, you need to understand this word in Romans chapter 11. As we said before, 
chapter 11 is like bankruptcy. You know what I'm saying? You got to watch that right there. Chapter 11 is like bankruptcy. And to avoid bankruptcy, you got to recognize, you know what I'm saying, what is written here in this word, spiritual bankruptcy. So verse 25, right, verse 25, it says, For I would not, brethren, and so he calls them brethren. He doesn't make a distinction that they're brethren. You know what I'm saying? Because if they truly are in the faith of Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know what I'm saying? Our black Lord and Savior receive him in spirit and in truth. That means in truth recognize, yes, he is black. You understand? That's just the fact. That's a natural fact. But what is more over is the spiritual. You understand? Is, 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 is the spiritual. So he calls them brethren because of that spiritual relationship. He says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. So even this is a mystery. You understand? Why is a, a white boy or a girl going to hear Hala Selassie, a black king, as the true and living God in Yeshua HaMashiach? You understand? That seems to be against. They should be healing some white thing. You understand? So, so there's a mystery of God in this particular matter being disclosed right here. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant of this mystery, of this mishtir, lest ye be wise in your own conceits. And this is what we see going on in Rastafari. There's a lot of ones and ones, you know, who are ignorant, you understand, and who are wise in their own conceits because they're ignorant of what's the, truly this mystery, this, this secret, you understand, the secret of the King of Kings or the secret of God, God's mystery, right? So it says right here, it says right here that at least you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part, not total blindness, because Ethiopian Hebrews, Ethiopia still carry that banner, right? Until the coming of his majesty, that blindness in part is happened to Israel. So Israel was and is part blind until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Wow. So that means that there is a role for the Gentiles in Rastafari, according to the word. So, so the blindness among Israel has happened in part. Not totally, until the fullness, you understand, the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Then it says right here, Israel is yet to be saved nationally. So, so you see there is, we came to see the prophetic order of things. So there is even a reason for so many so-called Gentiles, non-black peoples, you understand, citing up Rastafari. You know what I'm saying? And if that is in spirit and in truth, that is a good thing. That is a very good thing. If it's in his word and his order, because Israel is yet to be saved nationally. We are yet to be a nation again, my brothers and sisters. Not a state. Not the UN. You understand? But a higher power. You understand? Hebrew national. A higher authority. Verse 26 and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Sion, out of Zion, the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Yaakov, from Jacob. For this is my covenant to them, when I shall take away their sin, their hatiyat. As concerning the gospel, the Wengel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved of the Father's sake. Saying that many of the black Israel, the Hebrews, the Judahites in that time, they refused to accept Yeshua as the Moshiach. You understand? Therefore, when the gospel of Jesus Christus was preached to them, although he was black, they were black. Religiously speaking, they were in a in, in a in a in a, in a in a false mind state. They couldn't receive Yeshua HaMoshiach. So what Hawadi Apollos is saying is that they are enemies, right? This is that concerning the, the Wengel, you understand? Concerning the good news, right? Concerning the good news, the Wengel, let's show you this right here, the gospel of his imperial majesty, concerning the gospel of his imperial majesty, they are enemies. But for the fathers, for our black ancestors and black beta Israel, right? They are beloved. 
because of the ancestors. For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. In other words, even before you repent, you are already given a call. Many people say, hey, I'm not, I know I need to do more, and such and such, but you already feel that deposit, that seed, that token in you. You already recognize that. It doesn't mean you should not repent, but it means that John is a love of humanity. He gives us gifts. You understand? Know Even when we are in our stupidness, our sinfulness, our evilness, we still recognize if we're sensitive to it. If we haven't burnt out our conscience, we recognize that we have a gift. And this gift is not what we have done. This gift is what he has done for us, that we have a call. It's not what we have done, but, but it's how he has called us, that he wants us to, to, to do or to be or to function in a certain way. But it's that something is blocking us. That's where the repentance, you know what I'm saying? That's where the repentance comes in. That's where having the metanoia, being born again. We have the inward conception, but we have to bring that seed Right, that seed to full term, to, 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 to full birth, to be born, and therefore to be born again. We have to mortify the old man, the old nature. You know what I'm saying? We have to kill it. You know, it's so to kill that shit. It's to kill it. You know what I'm saying? We have to kill that old nature. We're speaking spiritually. Overstand? Verse 30 says, For as ye in times past have not believed God, that the Gentiles in times past. They, they had gods, right, just like a lot of you European Gentiles. In times past, you believed a lot of stuff, but you didn't believe in the true and living God. You will believe that one of these may be um, faces around the circle, around the side, around the square, you know what I'm saying, with Jesus. One of these other so-called, one of the images that some of your artists in Europe made, you know what I'm saying? So you did not believe God, you know what I'm saying? If somebody would have tell you before, well, you know, uh, Jesus, Yeshua, he's black. Many will be like, oh, no, 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 it's not. But, but through the grace of God, you know what I'm saying, and through studying and showing yourself approved, you're seeing that, oh, whoa, this is the case. So in times past, it says right here, have not believed God, yet have now obtained what? Mercy. Mercy. Lord of his mercy. Through their unbelief. Now, understand the connection with the Jew and the Gentile. They, the Gentiles, the Anglo-Europeans, have received, and this is, honestly, this is, even this word right now, there's some parts of this that my, 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 my natural man says, why would they get mercy to our unbelief? It almost seems like it's not right, right, when you just look at it like that. They get mercy. Now, what is mercy? Mercy is protection from punishment. You know what I'm saying? In other words, mercy means somebody's already judged guilty. It's like in the court. The trial goes through. The evidence goes through. You understand? And it's almost like right before sentencing. The judgment has already come down, but now it's in the judge's power. You understand? To even the judge can say a stay of execution. You understand? The judges have those powers in their jurisdiction. Now, the judge we're speaking of is our father. You understand? It's Abba. You know what I'm saying? Is, is the true spirit of God has given them mercy because of what? Mercy because of the Judahites, the black Hebrews, the Ethiopian Hebrews. Unbelief. Lack of amen. Ain't that something? So we're looking at them saying, whoa, 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 whoa. How, 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 how are they going to be calling themselves Rastafari? How, 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 how are they going to be saying how the Selassie is their God and Father. How, how are they going to be doing that? Because it's contrary to nature, right? But the Word already touches on that. But they have obtained mercy, protection from judgment, you understand, because of black beta Israel, the racial Judahite unbelief, lack of faith, right? Lack of faith. It goes on to say, even so have these also now not believed. Even so have, even though the Gentiles are coming forward, and people might see, like, people are not Rastafari, may see a white boy or girl or a man or woman as Rastafari, and they say, oh, what's this? Come on, Ethiopia. And they still don't. Some, some of the lost Negro sheeple still don't believe it. 
you know what I mean? They still don't believe it. It's like what the word says right here. It says, even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy they may obtain mercy. That through whose mercy is he speaking to? Remember, he's speaking to the Gentiles again. He's speaking to the Anglo-Europeans or in the time-space sequence, speaking to the Romans, right? And this was in 60 A.D., or about 10 years prior to the destruction of the temple and the Tisha B'Av, right? And the captivity of Black Beta Israel in the forced exile in Ethiopia, in Elephantine, in other parts of Africa, of the, of the remnant. Right? And this remnant would be caught in West Africa, and this is where our people now were enslaved in the trans-Ethiopic um, Ocean slave trade, the so-called transatlantic. By that time, the Atlantic Ocean was called the Ethiopic Ocean. Yes, in West Africa. Isn't that interesting? Well, I thought Ethiopia was in East Africa. Well, how come the ocean be called in West Africa? See, there's something that you don't know, and they don't, they're not telling you. You have to study and find the truth for yourself. All right? So here it says in verse 32, just a couple more verses, right? It says, For God hath concluded them all in unbelief. He's concluded his sentence, all of them, you know, like rubbish, spiritually rubbish, that he might have mercy upon all. So it's like a judge. A judge has to come to the decision. Before the judge can show mercy, the judge cannot stop the trial and show mercy. The judge has to allow the prosecutor, the defense attorney, all the evidence, all the witnesses, and everything to go through so that when it's all gone through, then he can conclude it. You know what I'm saying? He can then um, 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 speak on what the jury, if it's a jury trial, you know what I'm saying? If it's a jury trial, what the jury has presented to him. So it says right here, for God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy that he might have mercy upon all. So what we see ultimately is that although Yeshua was sent for black day to Israel, he came to his own and his own refused. Although Kedemawi Hala Selassie was sent to the Ethiopians and we the black people and, 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 and many of his own refused, right? And now we see the Gentiles coming in like in that time we see the Gentiles coming in. It says what right here? For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. You know what I'm saying? So, so that they had to be judged. So when they were included in unbelief, they were judged. So now he has mercy because mercy triumphs above judgment. You know what I'm saying? Oh, verse 3, 3. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of Jah, the knowledge of Ha Elohim, of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. Because this is, this is actually when you understand the true principles of, of court and the law and judgment. You, it begins to be more beautiful when you see this. So at this point right here, I didn't even understand years ago. Why, why Paul then starts getting into like a psalm, like a prayer from verse 33. When you really recognize what he is saying in the context of it, you will recognize why he says, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. And it's interesting because he's speaking Kabbalistically here, in, in a sense. He's speaking, because if you notice, one side of the tree, right, you have wisdom, knowledge, you know what I'm saying? One side of the tree is the severity side, and one side is the goodness side. But the real, the real way is the straight way, the straight way, which is, which is the center. You have the right and the left. And so here he says, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom, and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of Adonai? Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has known the mind of the Father? Or who has been his counselor? Who has been his counselor? Who has given him counsel? You know what saying? Verse 35. Or who has first given to him, and it shall be recompensed to him again. Who has given to him something that he has now given this back to someone? Who, who gave him that? You know what I'm saying? And the last verse, verse 36, for of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom 
be glory forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this is part part one in this series of the role of the Gentiles in, in Rastafari. Because it's important that we recognize, you understand, who's who, but also recognize not just what to tell the Gentiles, but also what role they play in this. You understand? If they are willing and obedient and faithful, you understand? And how to distinguish who is who and not just to judge on appearances, but rather to judge on righteousness. My brothers and sisters, um, we hope to continue this reasoning. More, we give thanks and praise and, and, and may Abba, in the name of Jesus Christus, we pray to the Father, to Abba, in the spirit of sonship, in the name of Yeshua Hamoshi, in the name and authority of the Son. May, may He grant you wisdom, Yosem, to know this word and to find the truth for yourself. In a Rasia Dinos Tefari, I am Wendem Yaden, reporting for Lion of Judah Society and broadcasting on this Ethiopian World Network channel on the YouTube. And you can join us on Ethiopian World Net on the Facebook. Shalom Ras Tefari. <laughs>